The new gunfighter Mark IV base looks similar to the previous models on the outside, but with a different connector, more resistant to abuse. There are of course other changes to be seen inside. Let's open it up. We'll warn you up here at the top. Do not do any work on the gunfighter, or any joystick for that matter while it's still connected to a source of power. To open it up, let's start by extracting the cable slack that's been tucked into the case, and then gently releasing the cable from the guide channel. To disconnect the plug, press the tab on the left side and gently pull it out in one smooth motion. Make sure the cable is safely tucked away to prevent it from being severed. Let's flip the base over to remove the dust cover. Unscrew the four hex screws holding the dust cover and internals to the casing, and then pry the dust cover off. On the top plate, you'll notice something new. We have dampening screws like on the previous models, but also adjustable spring tensioners. With the internal mechanisms now separated from the casing, you can see the tensioners from the side. The dampeners have also gotten some improvements for increased resistance. Here's how the spring tensioners work. As the tensioner screw is loosened, the spring is stretched less and therefore tension is reduced. As the tensioner screw is tightened, the spring is stretched more and therefore tension is increased. With the spring tensioner completely off, springs can be removed and installed without the need for the spring tool. Spring tensioners are on both the X and Y axes and behave the same way. Let's release the Y axis tension in order to remove its spring easily too. With the springs uninstalled, let's do a cam replacement now. Use a 2.5mm hex key and a 7mm wrench, or a small pair of pliers, to remove the nut and be able to uninstall the cam. There are numerous exposed wires and electronic boards nearby, so proceed with care. If you're afraid of stripping the hex screw, try using the hex key to hold the screw in place while you unscrew the nut with the wrench. You can do the same procedure to remove the cam from the other axes. Together with the new set of cams, let's add an extra spring to each axis for greater resistance. The cams have a built-in washer on the side adjacent to the ball bearing. After installing the hex key to the cam, Slide the new cam into place and fit a washer on the opposite side of the screw. When installing a new cam, be sure not to over tighten the nut, otherwise it might block the ball bearing from moving smoothly or may even damage it. It shouldn't be too loose either, as the cam would end up rotating independently of the screw. The cam and its assembly, the screw, nut, washer, and the inner cylinder of the ball bearing should all be moving in unison. Give the cam a little wiggle to ensure that the assembly is moving smoothly before moving on. If you want to install two springs on an axis, it's necessary to install the springs back to back. You'll notice that the spring hooks are aligned to the side of the spring. This means that the spring will stick out more on one side than another. Take advantage of this to prevent the two adjacent springs from crashing into one another. Since we released the spring tensioners completely, we can install these springs by hand. At least one, but ideally both, of the springs in a pair must have a jacket. 
check that each spring is in its guiding groove on the pin. If the springs are under tension or are just a very high strength, don't be afraid to use the included spring extraction and installation tool to install or remove springs. Do a quick motion check by hand. If everything feels correct, we can move on to tuning. Let's temporarily install the gimbal to the case, using the four screws. Be mindful of the wires and ensure they don't get pinched by the casing. This is not an uncommon way for users to decapitate their base cable. In order to secure the grip to the base, two fastener cylinders are attached together by a screw. The gripping force these cylinders produce secures the grip to the stem on the base. Each cylinder has a slanted section at the contact point, which when put together, completes the circular chamber that the stem goes into. Split the fastener and then insert the threaded cylinder into the left side of the grip, with the slanted side going in first. Once inside, we will hold it there with a the finger and then insert the other half, again slanted side first, into the grip. When both cylinders are inside the grip, insert the screw and tighten it. The two cylinders are pulled together and lock around the base stem. To begin our tuning with a clean slate, let's completely release both the X and Y axis dampers, as well as both the X and Y spring tensioners. The balance of dampers, springs, cams, and spring tensioning you use is personal preference, but for this guide we want to aim for a very smooth motion with no oscillation, but still with a firm and reliable return to center. Our starting point to achieve this goal will be to fully tighten both spring tensioners and engage both dampeners halfway. Move towards this configuration using smaller adjustments of the dampers and tensioners, and testing the way the joystick behaves as you go. You may end up finding a configuration more to your liking on the way to full spring tension and half dampening. Loosening the fastener screw allows you to remove the grip. We will now reinstall the dust cover in its plate, securing it to the base with the four screws. Plug the base cable back into the interface board, paying attention to its orientation. If it feels like you're fighting the plug, you may need to re-examine your orientation. Lead the wires back through the guide channel to keep them away from moving parts, and then tuck the access into the empty space along the edge of the casing without creating tension. There are two ways to set the dust cover. The slower profile method is better for compatibility. Try it out if you find your grip movement is fighting with the dust cover. Reinstall the grip, seating it firmly on the base with reasonable force, and then once again install and tighten the grip fastener as shown earlier. As we set up at the top, do not do any work on your gunfighter while it's connected to any source of power. This includes installing or removing grips from the base while under power. These are not hot swappable pieces of equipment. 
Once your gunfighter base is sealed up and the GURP is installed, connect the gunfighter to the black box using the provided cable, ensuring that the guiding groove on the GX12 male connectors matches with the guiding fold on the female connectors. Use reasonable force to screw down the securing rings on both ends. Once the black box is connected to your computer with the provided USB cable, the next step to getting your gunfighter back online and ready for flight is calibration. To find out how to do that, click the link below.